Okay, so um, I'm gonna start uh, talking about Hostway just a little bit. <laughs> um, we we are an infrastructure provider. We are a hosting provider. We have the privilege of working with some big companies, some great companies like Verizon, Samsung, Wikipedia. It's actually cool to to host Wikipedia, uh, Coca-Cola, and others in uh, in the United States. Uh, locally, we've been working with uh, Bitdefender, <laughs> um, with uh, TeamViewer, National Geographic, some Romanian banks like BRD and others, Danone, Emag. Actually, with Emag, we've we've have some fun, some interesting project. Uh, we all remember Black Friday, and uh, it's coming uh, next one. It's it will come in one month or so. Um, and there's a couple of marketing phrases here. Uh, yeah, we've been able to deliver a server, a physical server, in 20 minutes, so that's fast. You will uh, you will see why in the next slides, because we will o we will also tell you how slow we were before that. Um, and uh, we have a system that can provision a custom server. That means you can actually uh, choose configuration from, from our website and in around 60 minutes you'll have that server uh, online, which is, which is kind of cool. Um, I'm, uh, I'm Paolo Apostol. I'm technical director for Hostway Romania and Hostway UK. Uh, I've been working uh, with Hostway for seven years now. <laughs> Some might say too long. But uh, it's been it's been quite a ride. I have here with me in front of me Marius Boeru, who is a level level three systems engineer um, for Hostel Romania and Hostel UK as well. We've been working five years together, and we've been doing a lot of interesting projects. Um, what we are going to talk about in this presentation, actually, we're going to focus on two things. Uh, first, we'll go and talk about the automated provisioning and the fact that we built an automated uh, provisioning system for our services. And we're going to focus on the experience and also on the technical side of things. Uh, I want to tell you that this provisioning system is already live for two years now. We already deployed 1,000 servers uh, and we are managing them through this system. Uh, it has a lot of uh, CentOS-based uh, systems, of course. Um, and now I, I just want you to I, I want to paint you a picture of how things were going before this system. So basically, if you are a customer and you wanted three, four servers, physical servers, we would have to order the servers. The vendor would give us uh, a delivery time that uh can can be up to 30 days yeah so we could wait 15 20 or even 30 days until the servers were on our data center um after that we would have an installation chart uh we would give to the client and the client would have to choose i want this operating system i want this right configuration i want this software installed configured and so on um, we added the servers into the backup system, into our monitoring system, and so on. So this whole process was very, very long. Uh, we were moving, actually, seeing from now, we were moving in slow motion. And uh, we, we, it came a moment where we asked ourselves a worry question. And there comes a time where some manager or someone asks a worried question, and our question was how to turn 30 days into 30 minutes, actually. The, the question itself was how to turn 30 days into 30 minutes, but uh, we've evolved and we've uh, reduced that amount to 20 minutes now. So um, the reaction from the team after the question, can, can you guess what was the reaction of the team when you asked them, hey, how can we turn 30 days into 30 minutes. Can, you, can someone guess? Yeah, something like that. It was no fucking way, man. And 
the thing is, you don't have to stop there because they will find the answer for you. Um, and something, something incredible will start to happen. You will see the guys, the technical guys, and I'm sure you're familiar with, with this image. You'll see the technical guys round up a, a table. You'll see them start working together. You will see them um, generating ideas, generating solutions for how to automate this, how to automate that. You will see them get ahead of you. This is actually great. Um, and um, it, was, it, it was a process where we transformed the dream or something like how to turn 30 days into 30 minutes. Um, and we transfor they transformed that into actual, uh, an actual plan, an achievable plan, which is, which is a big deal. Um, so, to I, I just want you to uh, understand the two main cycles we have in this provisioning system that we, we developed over the past two, past three years, I guess. Um, we have a pre-provisioning cycle, and this happens when the server came from the factory. And basically, this pre-provisioning cycle prepares the server for the available state. Um, the available state is when the server is ready to be ordered from a customer, by a customer, yeah? The second, uh, the second cycle is the provisioning cycle. And uh, this cycle is triggered when an order is being submitted on the website. So the starting point for this cycle is actually our website. Um, it creates a customer account if you're a new customer. It depends one if you're an existing one. Um, it does a lot of the billing stuff, generates invoices, charges. Uh, it, it provisions the server itself, the, the operating system on the server itself, and you can choose what operating system you want from the website. Um, it configures the RMM, which is the remote management module for, for you to use if you're the customer. Um, remote management module is what HP calls ILO, integrated lights out, and uh, Dell is calling them DRACs, right? Everybody knows what's, what are those. You can remotely control your server through this uh, module. So we are doing the, um, the ILO configuration for the user, for the client, because they need to have a provisioned user. After you order the server, you need to have the credentials to access your server. Um, and we install the operating system and several software. We add it into the monitoring system. Um, basically, it's what, what the installation chart was for before, but now everything happens automatically, which is, uh, which is important. And uh, now I want to take you through the pre-provisioning process, the technical, the let's, let's, let's call it the architecture of the pre-provisioning process. And I will use I will use this, uh, this uh, projection to show you. So at step one, we have Hostway Data Center Operations team. They uh, first add into the provisioning system some details about the server, about the new server. They add a unique uh, age identifier. They add a serial uh, number um, and um, all this stuff in the system. The system confirms to the agent after that, the agent takes the physical server and installs it into the rack itself. It plugs the power uh, cable and the Ethernet cable in the server without, uh, um, without starting the server itself. And from step three, uh, the system takes over. And what happens here is that the remote uh, management module, uh, when it detects it has the power uh, uh, cable connected without the server being started, it will initiate a DHCP request and the component from the provisioning system, which we call OS Deployer, has this DHCP server, which listens for DHCP requests. Um, further down, we have the meta log that inspects the logs 
and when it detects um, a DHCP request with that form, he will know that there's a new server which ha has been racked, as we call them. Uh, the racking step is actually the data center team putting the server in the rack itself. So here, um, the system knows uh, there's a new server uh, that is being racked. At step five, uh, we are doing a matchmaking process between the virtual entity that was created when, uh, when the data center operations guy added the server, actually virtually in the system, and um, uh, the matchmaking is between the physical server itself because the DHCP request will contain th this uh, serial number and this this uh, unique identifier for the DNS name. And at the first step, as you see here, um, the agent added the same serial number. So after point five, after step five, the system knows which virtual entity is which physical server. And after that, there are some final configurations to be made, such as configuring the remote management module final IP because it needs to be static. Um, it configures it to communicate on the management VLAN and the admin password. So that's the pre-provisioning cycle which happens when the server came first from the factory. And from then on, the server is an in an available state waiting for someone to order it. Um, okay. This one is the provisioning uh, cycle and as uh, you may recall, it starts when somebody orders the server from, from our website. There are some billing stuff happening over there. There's the ordering system which has to gather the information from the website, from the shopping cart, and has to compile uh, the information into an order object. We have here a component, a central component, which we call age. Um, and it has the main server component and the provisioning server component. Here are some details just for you to uh, wrap your head around what we, we try to do. For example, the main server has an admin interface, which we call HI, from host to admin interface. This interface is an interface for us to, to manage the server, to be able to suspend the server, to close the server, to delete one, to see this client, which, which servers do they have, and and stuff like that. So we are able to interact with the objects provisioned by the, the services provisioned by the um, system. Um, we also have a job processor which is a uh, job scheduling uh, uh, software. Um, his job is to schedule everything like in a train station where the jobs are the trains and the job processor is the train station itself because we need to, for example, if we rack more servers, and in the same time, maybe we have an order, we need somebody to schedule everything. Um, and uh, we have the provisioning server. I'm not sure if this is the right name for it, but uh, it talks with all the external components because when you provision a server, you have to make sure, the, you have to, make sure to teach the networking infrastructure to, to accept the new IPs, yeah? So the new IP subnet needs to be routed in the infrastructure. Um, Maris, can you find some batteries? They will die soon. Okay, so we need to communicate with the router or with the routers. Uh, we need to communicate with the switches because, because we need to know the server in which switch they are and in which port they are connected. And we need to configure the VLANs and everything. We have the monitoring system, which is important because human error is not going to go away, never. That's for sure. But uh, you, you can always forget to add something in the monitoring system, yeah? But if you have an automated system that does that for you, this, this is great because on one hour after the server was, was ordered by the customer at 3 o'clock in the night, at 4 o'clock in the night, the server will be monitored and at 4 in one minute, if it has a problem, our, uh, our level one team will be able to see it. So this is important. Um, we also have a component called OS Deployer, but we will get into more details uh, later. 
And we have to communicate with the dedicated server itself because we have to provision the server, we have to connect to the remote management module, and so on. So this is the provisioning cycle. And uh, if you remember, I said that it, it is CentOS based. So here are the same two diagrams. And we have orange background for the CentOS systems. And I think there are a lot. So Kambir, you should be <laughs> proud of this. Uh, we are. And we are grateful, actually. So CentOS is a great distribution. Um, so now, uh, now I will want to uh, ask Marius to join me to take care of the OS deployer part and to get more deep into the technical part. Marius? Good luck. Thank you. Hello. Um, so basically we realized that uh, in order to do some pre-provisioning stuff, uh, we will need some kind of live image uh, so we can perform different tasks like configure the BIOS and others. Um, we built uh, a live image using the CentOS, uh, which we now use in three, three stages. Uh, the first one, um, as you can see here, uh, we boot after the customer um, ordered a server and uh, the server got assigned to the customer. Um, this pre-OS, as we call it, configures the BIOS. Uh, for example, uh, based on the OS the customer chose, we need to configure how uh, SATA is exposed to the operating system. Uh, we can either set it to AHCI or SATA RAID. Um, we also configure things like uh, uh, server strings in, uh, in the BIOS, like a welcome string and uh, a string that contains the hostway identifier. This OS, this pre-OS also performs um, auto-discovery tasks. Um, it can, uh, it detects the switch and switch port it is connected to. Um, also, it performs LSHW. I think uh, you guys might be familiar with this on Linux in an XML format. All this information, all the gathered information is sent to our provisioning system and stored uh, locally in a database there. Um, the second POS, also based on the customer order and the server type, uh, provisions the RAID array. Uh, it can provision RAID 1, RAID 10, RAID 5, 6, and uh, it can provision this on different controller types, not necessarily just uh, embedded controllers or things like that. And um, after a customer cancels a server or, I don't know, upgrades to a better server, we have uh, a post OS um, running that cleans up uh, the hard drives perform zero formatting and other tasks. After it's done, it, uh, it puts the server back in available mode and uh, now it can be assigned to a different order, a different customer. So this is the uh, first part, the pre-OS part, what happens with our live image, what it performs. How we were able to achieve this? Our provisioning system generates um, a script that uh, is available uh, via an HTTPS URL, uh, unique URL. Um, the also, the provisioning system defines a custom variable. Uh, we call it autopilot URL. Uh, and this variable gets set uh, as a kernel parameter. So when it boots, it has this variable uh, listed there. The pre-OS boots. Uh, it checks that the autopilot URL is set in the, as a kernel parameter, and if it sees it, it downloads the script and executes uh, all, the, all the tasks in there. So this is how we are able to achieve the pre-OS and post-OS objectives. Um, after all the, uh, the pre-OS uh, tasks are done, um, 
the server goes to the OS deployment if the customer chose to install an OS. Um, the provisioning system configures uh, the server in our OS deployer and based on, uh, on the parameter it receives, um, it can generate uh, a kickstart file with uh, everything needed or a pre-seed file, this is for Debian, or autoannotend.xml file for uh, Windows installations. Um, after that, the server is powered on, boots via network, and installs the appropriate, uh, it boots the pr appropriate uh, CentOS installation kernel and executes uh, whatever is listed in the kickstart file. It starts the automatic install process and once it's finished, uh, it uh, notifies the provisioning system that the installation is now complete. Uh, so how do we do it? This is, for example, uh, a script that is executed in a small part of a script that is executed in our uh, pre-OS environment. Yeah. So basically, it performs LSHW in an XML format and uh, sends it to, to TMP profile in the temp folder. It starts a LADVD daemon, which uh, basically um, listens for LLDP uh, packets. This is a way to detect uh, um, the network topology and to see what switch you are connected to and what port. So the switch uh, sends this information to the server. Um, after a short period of time, 30 seconds, because it needs to question the switch uh, and to see, uh, to get an answer, the switch replies uh, not so quickly. Uh, it performs a, a client uh, request and uh, outputs the, the information into a temp file. All this information is stored then into a variable called data and it's sent via CURL in a post to our provisioning system. After that, it shuts down. The provisioning system knows that the pre-OS is finished because it sent all the data and it goes to the next step, the second pre-OS or whatever it has to do. Uh, now, I will show you uh, a little bit the whole flow, the whole process of how this is done, starting with the order. So, um, as you can see here, this is uh, this is a part of our uh, host to admin interface. This is the server. Uh, it has no customer attached to it. It only has a unique identifier, the IP address, and it's in available status. We will now be ordering a server on our website. <laughs> you have different options. You can select uh, DDoS protection or anything that you might need. Do you agree with the terms of service? I should have read that, probably. <laughs> and the order was successfully placed. As you can see now, the order is allocated to the server. And it, it now has a customer name. And its status is in used. We will now see the first pre-OS booting. I'll probably have to fast forward a little bit. This is uh, actually the uh, integrated lights out console from HP. And we see how the server boots uh, via PXC. Download the appropriate kernel file. This is the first version of our pre-OS that is used still on our on uh, generation 7 HP servers and it was based on CentOS 5.5 uh, also due to some limitations of some HP drivers that are only built for Red Hat and they didn't work on later versions. 
Um, we have a second version based on CentOS 6.4, CentOS 64-bit 6 uh, um, which we use for the generation 8. So I didn't get the time to show you. The server is very quick. So as you can see here, it uh, downloaded, it already configured the, this part was the BIOS configuration. It downloaded the uh, special XML file to configure the BIOS. Um, it downloaded the binary for LADVD uh, and sent out the information after which it powered off. So now as you can see here, uh, the server has a switch, rack, and port. And the system knows uh, where the server is connected. We will now boot the second pre-OS that configures the RAID array. The same thing happens. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. So this should be the second one. No, this is actually the install part. Well, I'll continue. So basically, the second pre-OS configured the RAID array using uh, uh, some vendor-provided tools and some custom scripting. And uh, after that, uh, the uh, CentOS will uh, start installing. As you can see, we're installing CentOS 6.4, 64-bit. It downloads the appropriate file, the kickstart file also. That's not shown here. And the installer will start soon. There it goes. Downloading all the appropriate files, configuring software RAID, because the server doesn't have a hardware RAID uh, controller. doing all its stuff, installing the packages, which takes a little bit long. Now it will uh, perform some post-installation tasks uh, like uh, configuring NTP, NRP, uh, SNMP, and stuff like that. And it will again power off. Actually, it will reboot, not power off. After the um, install is completed, uh, in the post section of the kickstart, we actually do a callback to our provisioning system to let it know that the operating system has finished installing. And now it will boot the recently installed CentOS. There it goes. So there's the logging prompt. This is how we do our automatic provisioning. I'm going to let uh, Paul continue now.
Thank you, Marius. Um, actually, this is, I don't know, 2% of uh, the, actu the actual technical part, but it was kind of impossible to make sense of the 100% that was uh, um, reduced to 10-minute presentation or 2-minute pre presentation. So um, if you guys have more uh, questions, we will be able to answer them soon enough. Um, okay, so thank you, Marius. Um, results. And actually, now I what I want to talk about is what this project meant to us and what was the impact of, uh, of uh, this whole uh, provisioning system. Um, and just imagine 1,000 servers and just one configuration or three configuration or four standard configurations. One wiki page, which is, which is very different from 1,000 wiki pages for each installation. Um, what was also important was that um, the documentation is somehow automatically written because, because we know what the provisioning system does because we, we, we make him log everything he, do, he does, yeah? So this way, a smart sysadmin won't be able to, won't, won't be uh, necessary for him to make an installation report, which is a big deal, yeah? If you have a team, you should concentrate on uh, avoiding smart sysadmins to do boring stuff, such as installation after installation after installation. So this was a big thing for us. This was an important thing thing for us. Um, another uh, another important uh, result. Uh, if you remember Black Friday, we have this infrastructure that now holds 500 megabits of traffic. And in two days, we expect four or five times more traffic. We deploy 120 servers in. In 48 hours, and we got 24, 24 times more traffic than we expected. Uh, we got 12 gigabits per second of cached HTML content. Yeah, if if they were streaming movies, HD movies, that was really simple to achieve. But if you have cached HTML content really difficult to to achieve 12 gigabits. I'm talking locally, I'm not talking globally, yeah? I'm sure there are bigger numbers, but just from our per per perspective, this was huge. So this was something that was achieved with this project. Um, there are some customers who had, had problems in the past uh, at 11 o'clock or at 12 o'clock at night. Their business was suffering. Their business, and they worked hard for that business, was suffering because of the downtime at the current provider. At that time, we were happy to be the only provider to help these kind of customers with the server in 20 minutes or 30 minutes. And without, without uh, waking up the on-call guy or waking up the systems guy, which, again, for us, it's important. We have to do things. Uh, we have to protect our team. This is very important, okay? Um, so, these are somehow some of the results and some, some of the impact of this project. And now I want to talk about the secret ingredient because I think we, what we achieved here or what, the, what we achieved here was great. And I want to talk about the secret ingredient for this kind of stuff. And before I go to the next slide, I would like to ask you guys if you have an idea about what you might think is the secret ingredient for having this kind of project in place. Any ideas? What was the most important thing? Sorry? Sorry? Business? Laziness. Laziness. Interesting. <laughs> I never thought of that. Uh, uh, probably <laughs> it was one of the reasons that got up, uh, got us to to think that way. But uh, 
not not uh, not laziness, and it's not Santos. I'm sorry to say that it it wasn't Santos. Uh, it's actually the smart, dedicated systems engineers and systems developers. Uh, it's the people like the ones who created CentOS, and uh, it's, it's basically you guys. And I'll tell you why in a bit, because I'm not just a fancy sweet talking now. I have I have strong reasons to believe that. A uh, anyone uh, can guess uh, this S? What stands for? It's admin, exactly. <laughs> if there were uh, marketing guys here, they would say Superman, of course. But no, sysadmin, that's the correct answer. So um, I want to, I wanna yes, Sergio? Sorry? Surgeon, surgeon, OK. <laughs> oh, Sergio, oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, no, it doesn't. <laughs> um, OK, so. Actually, I don't want to be mean. Uh, Sergio has been, work, uh, has been working with us. He's a great guy. Uh, we have a lot of respect for him. Okay, so thank you, Sergio. Uh, I want to talk about uh, the, the sysadmin and about your role here because I think that sometimes you are too deep inside the infrastructures you are building and you are creating and you, you it's difficult for you to get the whole picture. Let's do a simple math calculation. If you remember, we had 30 days delivery time only for the ser servers. If we were lucky and we got them 20 day in 20 days delivery time for our vendor, we would do the installation and things, and we ended up delivering the server in 30 days. I mentioned we provision 1,000 servers in two years, yes? Let's do the calculation. If Every server would take 30 days in how, how many years we would provision 1,000 servers? Around 80 years, yeah? So we, we didn't actually reduce uh, um, 30 days to 30 minutes. We reduced 80 years to two years, which is even greater. So what I think, I personally think that the role of sysadmins and systems developers are to create technology, technology which can bring further future closer to us. And this is actually proven, yes? Of 80 years versus two years. And what's, uh, what's CentOS is doing with this kind of presentations, I think it's very important because hopefully we will be able to be closer and maybe to work closer in this kind of project. So very important, the secret ingredient in this case was the team. Um, okay, and I have some questions for you. Uh, do you guys have any ideas to include in the automated, in an automated system provisioning for physical servers? Do you guys have anything to add or anything to comment on based on our uh, presentation? Anyone? So I understand it's perfect, right? It's made perfect. <laughs> Sorry? Okay, thank you, thank you. Um, now, there are some statistic questions for my, for my uh, personal curiosity. I want to know... Um, which one here uses Vim as their uh, favorite text editor? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh, okay. Um, interesting. How many of you sysadmins use Windows as a desktop operating system? And don't be ashamed. Oh, that's a surprise, <laughs> Sergio. <laughs> Sorry? You have three desktops and all Windows based? Oh, okay. okay. I understand. So no one besides Sergio who also has uh, Linux, I'm guessing, for the other two desktops or just one of them. Okay, so zero. Okay. I'm asking because I was thinking of enforcing a policy for all the team to have Windows desktop. And they all, I, I, I want to say cry, but they all, uh, they all curse me or things like that. 
So it, it seems it's not a good idea. Yes. <laughs> yes, but you have to manage them from uh, that magical thing you should call laptop desktop because uh, this is actually this is actually a component uh, that is very uh, f uh, forgot about the sysadmin. Okay, you have the the infrastructures, you have the host to admin interface, you have a lot of interfaces. But what about the desktop? Because without it, you would have to go physically into the data center. Okay, so uh, no one. Okay, interesting. Uh, no, I, just kidding. Just kidding. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, who here loves his manager? Okay. No. Sorry. 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 Who here is a system administrator and loves his manager? Uh, Cloud-based solutions because <laughs> the manager is already here. Okay, yeah, 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 of course. <laughs> no, just kidding. Okay, uh, now it's your turn. Uh, I'm here with Marius. Do you guys have some questions for us? So, okay. Sorry? No. <laughs> I just respect him and uh, uh, like him very much, but I love my girlfriend only. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a that's an interesting. Uh <laughs> okay, so questions. Uh, yeah, I have a question. Do you use centralized storage? And if Sorry? you do, do you use centralized storage? Yes, we use centralized storage. What kind of and what for? Well, we have a cloud product, and the cloud infrastructure I has uh, centralized storage. So we use it for our our cloud. Uh, uh, service. We also use it for our backup services. Um, and you asked me what kind. Yes. You, you mean vendor like? Well, yeah, we no. used we used you used also. Sorry. So you you want to know the hardware manufacturer or the software solution? Hardware manufacturer. Okay, the hardware manufacturer is HP. We use uh, we use HP, and we also used Coride in the past and we actually I think we still use some of those for something can you we report uh, we report we repurpose the core systems with uh, open source software like open filer and freenas and we're okay. using that on them now <laughs> okay thank you any other questions marius can you stay here with me i won't bite you <laughs> so uh, physical machines are uh, more than 1,000. If we are to add the virtual machines, to be honestly, and I'm ashamed of that, I don't know, but I'm guessing close to 2,000 only in Romania, because we we also have uh, we also run the operations in UK and we there it's a mi migration process, but the the our state of the art uh, infrastructure is here in Romania. Um, Okay. Um, yes. Uh, just. So sorry. Ah, uh, uh, good question. I I couldn't say exactly. But Fifteen twenty depends on because uh, we have uh, customers that uh, order all types of servers, small, big, and uh, I would say around fifteen, something like that. Fifteen twenty. Yeah. Um, for backup, uh, we use uh, we, we 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 recommend the one soft because we use it right now and uh, it works fine for us. Um, la now it's called Idera, yeah. Uh, for disaster recovery, the the discussion is 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 way more complex because what kind of disaster? Do you want the data center, do you want to be in another data center in the same city? Do you want to be in, a, in another data center um, but in a different country? Do you want to be in another data center in a different continent? Or uh, in a different tectonic plate? Because uh, people have 
all sorts of needs when uh, when um, they think of data uh, disaster recovery. Um, and usually we can accommodate almost all of them, I think all of them, because Hostway has uh, offices and data centers throughout the, the globe, so we can, we can do that. Uh, but uh, if you are interested in disaster recovery, this is actually a personalized discussion because we need to understand what do you need exactly. The first level would be to have in different data centers in the same city. So that we, this is, this is actually what we have implemented uh, most often. With replication, with uh, we have to discuss on the uh, how much time do you want uh, your latest data to be um, available from retention, things like that. So we can talk about it. But it's it's a it's a complex topic, and the costs are raising exponentially, depending on what your in current infrastructure is and things like that. Uh, yes. You are throwing that microphone into someone? <laughs> okay. So, anyone uh, wants the microphone? Sergio. Okay, here it goes. <laughs> uh, do you think, do you think um, the deployment time can be reduced to 10 minutes? I know you know and you think <laughs> that it can and uh, that means we do too. What about five? <laughs> well, if you, if, if I think about it, if we reduced it from 30 days to 30 minutes or 20 minutes, I guess five could do as well. And, um, but it depends on what the customer uh, asks for. Um, so actually, I forgot to say that quote. I, I wanted. I wanted to share a quote to you guys, a quote that was uh, very, very, very interesting to me. Uh, and uh, this, this is in the same idea of, I don't know, of reducing to five minutes or two minutes, even if a customer would order cPanel or something. So the quote is, I don't know who said it. I, 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 I forgot. I also forgot to say the quote, so I don't have a good memory. But uh, the quote is something like this. Um, sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. And for me, which I was a technical guy long time ago and now I'm a technical manager, uh, I can see that very well. I'm not sure if you guys being the technical guys and uh, uh, working with, with the magic every second, I'm not sure if you are able to see it, but I can see it very well. And this is actually very interesting. So, yes, Sergio, probably it's possible uh, to reduce the time into five minutes. And do you think that would add an extra value to the service to have a physical server provisioned in five minutes? Physical server. Let me ask you a question in return. Uh, would you agree to help us reach that objective? No, I'm asking if it if so no. can add value because I want to know if it if it can be researched. Uh, you are asking if it would be important to achieve yes, five minutes with a physical minutes. server? Yes. Of course, of course. Uh, there, are, there are infrastructures so big with hundreds of servers, with two hundreds of servers, uh, on which uh, there are Im immense uh, database deployments and they need to, if, if you are able to provision a server in five minutes or even faster, you would be able to um, to update the infrastructure according to uh, what happens in the application side. So if you have a peak, you would be able to provision more servers that would hopefully have everything already configured and you would be able to accommodate a higher traffic with more, s more physical servers. So this would be actually very important for many customers and for many businesses that run on hundreds of servers. So yes, definitely. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? There was there? No? Thank you, guys. Thank you very much, and thank you, Karambir. Oh. Sorry, sorry. Uh, I have one uh, I can slide for, for you guys. Um, 
Actually, yes, I forgot, I forgot this slide. Oh, marketing will kill me and the HR manager will kill me. But uh, uh, we are hiring uh, CVs, jobs at Hostway Row. Very simple to remember. And f uh, uh, special dedication for our designer. We have this for you. Thank you. Thank you.